word get away from your body. Did you realize that? Like, you can't leave your body. Hey you guys, so I had all intentions on doing my Q&A 2019 video and I was like literally sitting down to do that but I realized like I need to explain 2018 before I do my 2019 Q&A. I think my button's falling. So um, yeah, let's recap on 2018 because I feel like I should share more with you guys because I'm very private so as far as privacy goes I don't like showing my relationships like showing what you know I go through and all that stuff so I'm gonna be very transparent with you guys and open and just you know tell you guys about what's going on because life is not always glitter and sparkles and everything like that so yeah, so 2018 was the worst but best life of my year. And I didn't realize it was the best life of my, yeah, my, no, my best year until like the end when I looked back at everything. And I just feel like it's important to tell you guys this so there's other people that might be going through things or whatever. So yeah. So uh, in 2018, um, it was very difficult for me. Like I had cried the most out of any year of my life. So um, the first month of 2018 was cool. And then a few months went by and I was like in a relationship, you know, it was supposed to be monogamous. So, um, yeah, so I was in like a relationship at the beginning of 2018 and uh, um, that didn't work out too well. Uh, I'm not going to like go all in depth, but um, I'm very protective of myself when it comes to like people in my relationships and posting stuff um, and whatnot. So I didn't post this person or anything. I haven't posted somebody I was in a relationship since like 2015. And when I posted that, that was just like, everybody was like, you know, commenting. And then when we broke up, took the pictures down, everybody's like, what happened? So that's kind of why I get like hesitant of posting people that I'm in a relationship with. Um, so yeah, so yes. So that whole relationship, thing ended um fairly quickly because there were some things that happened that i could not um accept and deal with and get over with but um it took me a very long time to get over that whole relationship that person and everything and i was just like really like not myself and I was just I really wouldn't say like depressed but I was just like not in a good space um so like I didn't want to like date anybody like after that happened I didn't want to date anybody I didn't want to like go out anywhere I barely want to record YouTube videos I don't want to take pictures like none of that and I think that relationship was an eye-opener because I'm a very like forgiving caring nurturing person and when I like somebody I really like that person and I'm all for that person but when you do me wrong then it's like over like there is like a zero percent chance I'm gonna get back with the person if you like do something that I just can't tolerate or accept like it's not gonna happen again so it took me a very long time to get over that situation and it was very hard. So I would like literally just be like crying, crying myself to sleep at night, you know, just not in a happy space at all. And then at work, you know, it was end of the school year, kids are like hyper and they're just like, you know, making you stressed out a little bit. But um, yeah, it would, took me a lot to get over that 
but I also um, learned things about myself that I didn't know before. Um, last year, I definitely learned how to self-love myself. Um, I always loved myself, but sometimes I would let people like that I like just kind of not run over me, but like I'll put them before myself and what I stand for and like my morals and all that stuff. So um, last year, it just helped me remember like who I am, what I deserve what I should accept, what I shouldn't accept, and all that. Um, so yeah, so I'm glad that I went through that crazy relationship last year because it helped me tremendously, like a whole lot. So I'm glad I went through that. Um, and also, um, what helped me was listening to podcasts. So like in the morning when I'm getting ready for a work or whatever, I would usually like, listen to some trap music, listen to some whatever music, and I was like, I think I need to change. So I mean, I already, I already went to church, all that stuff, like, talk to God, everything. But I was like, something needs to change with me because this is not working. So I started listening to podcasts, so I listened to like Christian podcasts, and I will put them below in the info section. Um, I listened to like Joel Osteen, um, he was the first person that I listened to really. And then um, Elevation Church, so those are like the main two and I started like from like their first podcast and went that, you know, went from oldest to newest. So I pretty much listen to all of them now, but I will listen to them over again. So I just noticed a change within myself waking up in the morning instead of listening to you know somebody cussing yelling you know that kind of music listening to something inspirational something uplifting and godly that really has helped me so yeah that has helped i'm and so excited for 2019 and what this year has to come so speaking of 2019 i am going to do my q a um i posted in December on my Instagram Q&A questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into that. Okay guys, so I'm gonna get into my Q&A questions and I was gonna do like all of them in one video, but I'm gonna have to split it up because I got a lot of teacher questions and I kinda wanna do that separately. So these Q&A questions are going to be about relationships and um, basically, um, my goals for 2019 so um, I got this question quite a few times do you date oh are you dating anyone spill the tea sis have you ever been in a serious relationship so as y'all saw in the first half of my video last year was crazy and I grew a lot and learned a lot from my past, okay? So now I feel like I'm more open to getting to know people and dating or whatever. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very private. I don't like giving all my information out. And I told you, I know you just told me to like spill the tea, sis, and everything, but, um, I'm interested in getting to know people. I think that's very important first to become friends with somebody and get to know them and see how they are, different situations, you know, ask these deep questions and all that. And also let things happen naturally and, you know, go with the flow type thing. I am not wanting to force anybody to like me. A matter of fact, if somebody that I like, you know, that person and I are talking and they don't like me for some reason anymore, I'm just like, okay, bye. Like, I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, please stay with me. You know, what did I do? Like all that stuff. So I feel like, you know, God has a special person for everyone, myself out there. So um, I am almost 30, oh my gosh. 
I'll be 30 next year, 2020. So, um, I would like to, in the near future, you know, like the next five years maybe, like be married and have kids. Like I love kids. Like, cannot wait until I have kids. I already have the names picked out of all three of my children. Like, I'm so excited for kids. But um, I also want to make sure that my family and my kids are in a stable environment. Um, I grew up with both of my parents at home and I want my kids to grow up the same way. So um, I just want to make sure like our foundation is straight and set before I pop out any children. I know things happen in life, but that's, I could have it my perfect way. That's how, you know, it will go. So. Um, I am open to dating and hopefully I will find somebody or that guy, that man will find me and just, you know, sweep me off my feet. So yeah, so um, that was that dating question. Um, somebody said, what is something you will not share or post about online? Do you feel like you some, do you feel like something should be kept private or open to share almost anything? So I, like, like I said before, like with relationships, I rather keep those private until like it's for real, for real, like for real, real deal type thing. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I see so many like relationships online that literally last for like, they'll be in love for like a month and then the next day they're broken up on to the next person. Like, I just don't like people on my business. And I feel like sometimes when you do post a relationship, and let the whole world see it. Everybody has their opinion and not everybody is coming from a nice place. Um, some people are just mean and negative for no reason. So not everybody has your best interest and I feel like you should protect your personal life and your relationship from all that. So, um, but you know, when I get a man, you know, and we're together forever. I will be posting it, okay? So yeah, um, and do you feel like some things should be kept private or feel open to sharing almost anything? Um, me being a teacher, I feel like I do keep a lot of more things private than other people just because of the career and field I'm in. A lot of my students at my school found my YouTube page and they watch my videos, so I have to make sure I keep it good for them because I know they're watching and I know some of them especially like the fourth or fifth grade girls they do look up to me so I want to be a positive role model to them so I prefer to keep a lot of things private and not share all of that um, are you where you thought you would be at your current age then greatest lesson learned in 2018 that was a great question so I'm 28 now. Um, honestly, I thought I would be married <laughs> and about to have kids because I wanted to have kids when I was 30. I'm not 30 yet, but um, the reason I said that was because my mom had me at 30. So we're 30 years apart and I thought it would be cool if like we were all 30 years apart. So like 30, 60, 90, like 30 years old. Like we're all 30 years old. I mean, 30 years apart. So, um, yeah, I thought that would be cool. So, yeah. But if we were all 30 years apart, I thought that would be cute. So, I mean, I don't know if that's going to happen. And greatest lesson learned in 2018 is love thyself and be true to thyself. <laughs> so, just stay true to yourself and, um, don't let anybody pressure you into doing anything. You know, it's your life to live. That's what I had to remember. This is your life. Nobody's walking in your shoes. You're in your own shoes. You're in your own body. You can never ever get away from your body. Did you realize that? Like, you can't leave your body. So you have to love yourself and stand for what you believe. So that's what I am on now like yeah um somebody said would you rather not work out for a week or not wear makeup for a week 
I rather not wear makeup for a week. I cannot go a whole week without working out. It is so hard. I tried it and I felt like crap, okay? Um, me not wearing makeup for a week is completely fine. I go out to grocery store without makeup. I'll go to the gym without makeup. That doesn't bother me at all. What are your tips on a healthy lifestyle, staying disciplined with healthy eating and working out? Um, I grew up like doing sports, so I'm very athletic. I was very athletic growing up. So it's kind of like in my blood to be like this. Like I try, like once I stop cheerleading, so I did gymnastics for nine years and I cheered for six. Once I did that, I was like, oh my God, I'm so bored. Like I had the urge to work out and sweat. So I started just working out in the gym a lot. And um, I used to work out, like when I was in college, I would work out a lot. Even after I graduated college, I work out a lot. But I was not eating the right way. And I was like, why am I not seeing a change? Like, or like a bigger change that I should be seeing. And that's because I wasn't eating right. So I started getting like obsessed with like looking at YouTube videos on how to eat healthy, what certain foods do to your body, at what times of the day to eat certain things, like stuff like that. So uh, I think I'm just like self-disciplined when it comes to that. But I also love the feeling and uh, how I feel and look when I see like changes in my body. So like last year, I felt like my body was great before I went to Punta Cana because I was very strict. I was doing like, I wasn't cheating with my eating, nothing. And I loved my body back then. So right now I'm working on getting that back. So I'm starting that next week. But um, once you like see your body change everything, like the feeling is amazing and it's great. Are you single? Yes, I am single. I'm not in a relationship. How many languages do you speak? I speak um, one and a half. So I speak English and I speak like half of Spanish. Any tips on solo traveling? I don't have any tips on solo traveling because I don't travel by myself. Um, I mean, like I might go visit a friend in a different state. That's That really doesn't count as solo. Like literally I'm just like on the airplane by myself. Once I get there, I know somebody. Um, so I'm not really sure because I'm scared of solo travel, like to a different country. Um, somebody did ask me about my Thailand trip and what was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um, my Thailand trip, like somebody asked me like, how did I even plan the whole trip? And I did get a lot of questions like that and they were asking like, did I use a travel agent or whatever? So my coworkers and I, I went with three of my teacher friends. So we were literally just like, oh, we need to go somewhere this summer. Cause like the year before we went to Mexico and we're trying to make it like a tradition thing. Like we go somewhere every summer. So we were like, we need to go somewhere. Where are we gonna go? So I am such like a planner type person. I was like, okay, I'm gonna look up the cheapest places to travel um, like out the country. And so I Googled that and a list of places came up and I really wanted to go to Jamaica and that wasn't even on the list, but I really wanted to go cause I love oxtail and I want to eat some oxtail really bad from Jamaica. So we canceled that out because we saw Thailand on there and I was like, it would be really cool if we went to Thailand. Cause it's like all the way across. Like Jamaica is like a few hours away, but Thailand, like that's all the way on the other side. So I told them and they were all down for it. Um, so we literally like one day after work, we're looking up flights and we found a flight. The flight was 900 and something dollars. But we did find a flight for $600, but we didn't go with that airline. It was Air China because I saw reviews and I was like scared because they had like bad reviews. So we went with another airline called Sherman Hair Airline and they're pretty new, but they had better reviews. So we went with them. So the flight was like 900 and then we were looking at Airbnb. So in Thailand, everything there is cheap. 
the Airbnb was so cheap. So at first it was three of us going and we had an Airbnb and it was like $30 a night and it was like really nice. But then a fourth person came so we had to switch and get a bigger Airbnb. So we stayed there for like a week and I think out of, we, the total price for the Airbnb was like $800. Um, so we split it, so it was kind of like almost 200 we paid per person for a whole week, which was great. So our trip was like $1,100, but it could have been cheaper. Like we could have got the cheaper flight and we could have found a cheaper Airbnb, but pretty much like it wasn't like that crazy. Cause when we went to Mexico, like it was, no, when I went to Putacana in June, I paid like 1100. So it was kind of like the same price. I think Tyler was actually cheaper. But um, but yeah, and the way I found the Airbnb was like, I looked up popular like places in Thailand. And so I like Googled that and I looked on the map and then I kind of like correlated, coordinated or correlated with the Airbnb and like searched in that like popular area. So the location where we were at was great. It was popular. There were, we walked outside, we were on the strip, and we were walking distance to the beach. Like, it was really great. So, um, I feel like if you wanna travel, and if you have some friends that wanna do it too, just do it, don't talk about it. Just just do it, okay? Just do it. I feel like I'm not into like materialistic stuff. As y'all can see, like, I'm not that materialistic. Like, I don't have that much designer stuff at all. So, um, and then when I did have designer stuff, like my Christian Louboutins, I got them when I lived with my parents, so I didn't have any bills back then. Now, yeah, I'm not buying any of that because I need my to spend my money in other places. So I'd rather go on vacations and trips and make memories rather than buying materialistic items. I really don't care for materialistic items. If somebody got it for me as a gift, I'll be very thankful, but I'm not about to go spend like five thousand dollars on the purse that's just personally me but um yeah um Let's see what else tips on moving out via by staying at home um i suggest you if you can stay with your parents as long as you can um i didn't move out until i was 26 so i stay with them um, I made sure I literally had everything before I moved out and by everything um, like a car so my parents got me a Honda in 2010 but then I had to give it to my brother in 2014 so I had to buy a whole new car so I made sure I had a car and I didn't have a high car note because you don't want a high car note um, and I made sure I had all my furniture before I moved out. So I did not have any furniture when I moved, like, like I didn't have any furniture after college. Like all I really had was like a dresser and a bed. So I made sure I had a couch, I bought TVs, like all that stuff before. So like I literally had it delivered to my parents' house and I kept it in the packaging and then the movers moved it into my new apartment. So yeah, um, just make sure you have everything in order and you have extra money put aside. Um, if you are moving out or if you decide to be moving on your own and make sure you can afford it. Um, I would love to stay in a nice high rise downtown in Atlanta, but I can't afford that. I know what I can and cannot afford. So you never know what is gonna happen in life. Like something could happen and you need, you know, your savings money or whatever. So I feel like you should live comfortably. All right, and the last question I'm going to answer in this episode is, uh, how are your boobs? Any regrets? What's your doctor's name? I'm looking to get mine done. So um, they're wonderful actually, uh, I feel like every year so I got them done if y'all didn't know I got them done in 2015 so every year I feel like they've been getting better because they're like settling more and more so it's been four almost four years now and um 
I don't regret it. The only, well, the only thing I really regret is like go, getting them this big. So uh, when people look at me, they don't think that I had them done. So I think they look very, very natural, but they're in my body <laughs> and I can feel them clearly. So I'm still like getting used to like the size of them because before I was not even feeling a B out. So I went from a B to a double D and my goal was actually just to go to a C, like a full C, like small D. And it's hard to like, you know, calculate. You can like get an estimate on what they're gonna be like depending on the size you get, like the CCs you get. But every body, like literally every body, like body, every body is different. So yeah, so um, I don't regret it. I'm glad I waited until I was 25. Um, I literally waited, you know, I mean, to me that's a long time as opposed to getting like when I'm 21 or 18 or something. So I feel like I gave t enough time for my body to like grow and develop. And once I realized that they weren't coming, then I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead. And my mom said she didn't get hers until she had me. And I was like, I don't wanna have to have a child to get, you know, boots, whatever. So, um, I mean, I liked mine before. It just, I just wanted a little bit of more fem femininity. I don't know if that's a word, but be a little more feminine because I'm very athletic, muscular built, so. Um, uh, my doctor's name was Dr. Colgrove and he's great. Um, I will leave the link to my first boob video below so you guys can see. Um, I did a whole series on like questions and answers. So yeah. Um, and then the last, I don't know my last question, but this is my last, last thing. Um, people are asking what my plans were for 2019 and my plans for 2019 is just to be successful and just make it a great year. I felt like last year, I feel like everybody felt like this. Last year was a learning year. Everybody went through something tragic, I felt like. And this year it's like my eyes are open and I'm excited to do more things. So one thing is like, I really want to bring my YouTube channel back to life because it died. Um, Cause I just wasn't like, I was feeling it, but I wasn't like feeling it, feeling it. like when I was in college, like I was so excited to do videos. I was like waking up like, yes, I want to do videos. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And now it was just like, like last year, it was just like, okay, it's whatever. So yeah, so YouTube is something that I still love to do. So I just want to like improve my YouTube skills and give you guys like better content, not just like putting stuff together and throwing it out there. Like I wanna spend time with like what I'm doing and making sure I excel through that. Um, so yeah, I really wanna do more workout videos, like better workout videos. Um, I want to do more natural hair videos, so I'm going to try, you guys, to embrace my natural hair, which I do. I just, I wanna try different styles and stuff with it. Um, and I know, like I've been saying for years, I was gonna do teacher videos. So I'm really gonna try to get into doing more teacher videos and outfits and stuff. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to set up, like how I'm gonna show you guys my outfits. I thought it'd be cute to show you in my classroom, um, but the lighting in my classroom is horrible. So we're gonna, we'll figure it out. But I just wanna show you guys like better content and stuff. And if you guys have any, Thing you want me to record or show you guys please let me know um, I do want to try to do like story times and I feel like that's me trying to be more transparent with you guys because I don't like telling people my business but um, I do have some good stories to share with you I just don't think you I don't know I just didn't think you guys would be interested in that but we'll try it so I'll give you guys some stories and uh, yeah and I would like to open up my own business this year and I'm not gonna say exactly what it is yet, but I've been thinking about it and coming up with ideas. So 
hopefully I can get that started this year. That will be exciting. And um, also I did post on my Instagram this planner and I've never been the type to like write down things. I always just keep them in my head, but um, I'm gonna start using my planner and I was like on the computer searching for a great one. Found this one, it's by Bloom and I'm gonna get close so you can see it. Okay, so this is what this planner looks like and I got it on Amazon and it's by Bloom and I have to like hold this side because my phone number's on here. So um, yeah, it has like the calendar thing on here. It has your information on the front and then um, it has like, I thought it was cute because it has like different um, like things, like goals you wanna do for the year. So like, I didn't finish filling it, filling it out yet, but like for health and fitness, I put lower my body fat, um, building my booty, keep being active and get abs, and then like relationships, loving and lasting. Um, and for fun and adventure, travel to at least three different countries. Um, on here, it has like other stuff you can put, like a place you like to visit. I put Bali, like I wanna go to Bali this summer, um, Jamaica, and like skills you wanna learn and all this stuff. So I thought that was cute. More or less, more things you're gonna do, less things you're gonna do. Have a vision board, and then it has your like weekly template, and then it has like by month um, things on here, so yeah. So that is about it. Um, thank you guys so much for supporting and listening to me. Um, I hope somebody can get out of what I was speaking about 2018. I hope somebody finds it positive. Just be true to yourself and all that. And 2019 is going to be a great and wonderful year for everybody out there. And I hope everybody is successful and succeeds. Um, so yeah, if there's like anything you would like me to talk about or some things that I could do, how to make my channel better, please let me know, I'm very open. And if you guys message me on like Instagram, uh, I'll leave that link below, well right here. If you guys message me on Instagram, I usually reply. If I don't, it's cause like I didn't see it, like I for real didn't see it, or I was like in the middle of something. But I try my best to reply to people on Instagram and everything. So thank you guys for again for supporting me and I'll see you next time. Bye you guys.